feel like I'm being a lot less scared. Like those words um, really resonated with me. So the cool thing about this program, it wasn't just about, hey, get on the water and row. And of course, we were all scared of the water and we didn't know, we didn't know how to swim. But they, you know, although I felt like it was building the airplane in the air with, with this program, um, one thing it did to me, right, was like, hey, let's spend more time on this machine and let's spend a lot of time, you know, learning how to swim before we get you guys comfortable with the water. And so that's kind of how that happened. So you've alluded to a couple times, you know, obviously the, the, the games that were present at the family and you know, other high schools around. Yet to row, you, you were, it wasn't just men, right? You had kids from other schools as well. So how, how was, how were you able to um, get yourself comfortable with doing that? How were the instructor able to overcome, um, not just the fear, but just, you know, the, the turf issues and the other ones that, that are so prevalent, and as well as, uh, you know, the stigma maybe of, of, of working together with kids from other neighborhoods, other rival kids. How, how did that work out? Yeah, I think it, it was, it was, it was hard. It was challenging at first. Um, it was challenging because in my mind, I said, okay, I gotta navigate in space with guys who don't even like each other from our neighborhood, but we also gotta navigate space in a boathouse where people didn't look like us, but didn't speak to us, and the boathouse that felt like that's supposed to be our home boathouse can feel like an away game. So it was a lot for all of us to really kind of navigate both spaces. And I think the first thing we had to do was really learn how to connect with each other. And, and strangely, the way we all connected uh, was um, because we were kind of out of our neighborhood and at a race where no one looked like us and we kind of looked at each other like, okay, we have to stick up for each other, right? And in rowing, what's special about it is that you race maybe one time in your city and every other race is out of time. And so in those long bus rides, we would ask questions like, hey man, like, what keeps you up at night? What keeps you doing? Like, you know, why are you sad? You know? And so in those 15 hour or eight hour bus rides, we, we had to communicate. Did that originate with your coaches or just from within your own? Both, yeah, both. I mean, definitely coaches will start off the conversation and then we kind of keep it going. And, uh, and so that's kind of how we were able to connect by being isolated and away from everything. And that's when we started asking the questions. And then once we became, we kind of, uh, well, I guess once we became a team, then from there, uh, you know, it's just got a little bit better. So let's just touch a little quickly on the, the competition. You guys were not very good. Is that, is that fair to say? <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that had to be tough too, just uh, you know, putting all the time in, like in any competition, and not sort of seeing at least the outwardly uh, uh, validation of this is great. I mean, how, how did you guys deal with, with that in terms of the fact that obviously you're all new and it's, it's, you're competing against people who've been, in some cases, doing this for quite some time and much further ahead? Yeah, that was, uh, you know, honestly, it, it was, it was my mindset. You know, we, everyone was physically uh, gifted. Everyone was athletic. You know, you're talking about young people who also have a lot going on outside of the water. Some people, they just, you know, some kids, the kids that we shared the house with, they were able to go and row and, you know, and get rides home, you know, how are they gonna get home sometimes? Uh, if it was going to be safe at times. Some guys were working on the weekends to help them on pay bills. So we had a lot to think about outside of Rome. Um, but also, you know, we were in a place where we needed our confidence uh, to be built, especially, like, mostly speaking to myself. Like, think about, like, I was thinking about more of my performance. A lot of the hindrance I have is my mindset. So, for example, if I showed up every single day and told you, Michael, you know, you're not gonna be good at this sport. Um, you're not gonna graduate high school. Um, you're not gonna pass the next test. Um, there's no way you're gonna pass these guys that have the best folks. Like, 
every single day, if I told you that, you're gonna be like, I don't like this guy. He's telling me every day that like, I'm not good. The truth is, is that even some of the athletes that are here today, we tell ourselves that more than anyone else ever would. And it comes to a point where we don't like the sport. Like how many athletes told themselves, we're not gonna win that game, right? Or we're not gonna pass that test, you know? Or, there's no way I'm gonna get into that college, right? And so we tell ourselves that, and so when we are in a program that, that we have less and expect to perform in the same manner as everyone else, you begin to tell yourself these things. And so um, I think that, you know, we're like, oh, we got the oldest folks, we have less days to practice, there's no way it's gonna win. So I think that kind of helped hurt the performance a little bit. Um, but, you know, it, it, it took time for our coaches to build on confidence. With every race, we got a little bit more faster. And so basically, it was spending more time on the machine. It was really encouraging each other. And then the more resources that we got, the better we felt about uh, the sport that we were in. So you talked about growing up today, but I've grown up about three years. Know, it's more than just growing. Obviously, it's a very competitive sport and physically, uh, Challenging as any sport out there. Um, but you also kind of talked about it as an entrepreneurial learning experience. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just my daughter. Um, Give us some grace. The draft is next week, guys. The draft is next week. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the draft. <laughs> so you, you talked about it uh, as an entrepreneurial experience. So let's elaborate on that. Yeah, I mean, it was just not a rowing program, but it was a youth entrepreneurship program. And I think that, you know, Ken, so Ken had a vision that, you know, oh, Ken. Ken, Ken was the founder of our program. We started the program with, and he had a great team, um, Victor, Jessica, and Mark Mandel. Um, you know, his idea was like, hey, kids need more to row, right? And, um, and really, that program was really learning about what our community need and, and how we can help provide that because we all are entrepreneurial in so many different ways. And so that program really added to, added to the work that we're doing. And just long story short, 90% of those guys that were in the boat own their own company. You know what I mean? Which is awesome. And hire people from the community that we grew up in. And so that entrepreneurship program um, was a huge investment in all of us. And so sometimes folks want to start a growing program, but I think you have to look at also what the community needs, how the community measures success. Um, you know, when I first wrote my book, a editor said, no, you didn't win any races, uh, you didn't get a gold medal, you didn't race at an Ivy League college, so they said, no, we're not gonna publish this. But what they didn't understand is the way my community measures success is the way I felt like, okay, I am successful. There was no access to swimming, but our program figured out how to take these men and teach them how to swim, and the water became their place of refuge. Chicago had been trying to solve, how do we get these guys from different neighborhoods to connect and be a brotherhood? Rowan did that, right? These young guys from the west side took the bus every single day, an hour and a half, to Lincoln Park to be committed to a sport that we felt like that sometimes wasn't committed to us. Like, all of those were wins. And so I wanted to write about those wins. And, um, and so entrepreneurship really went hand in hand with the growing program when it comes to taking risks, going after it, networking, and just doing something new and different that benefit us in so many ways. So as, as an entrepreneur yourself, so we, you, know, you mentioned you know, you've got this crazy idea of your right book, even though you've never written anything or not really uh, a writer per se, you certainly didn't see yourself as that, but you managed to uh, get a publisher and someone to be looked at and be very successful. And uh, again, taking a lot of those life lessons in terms of the, the, the discipline, the resilience, and the, uh, you know, from, from, your, from your crew days. Um, so take us kind of the, the, the next, where have we been? This book, how old is this book? Like six, seven years old? Yeah, 2020 from this one, I self-published before that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
So yeah, fill, fill in some of the gaps now. Since, since, since this book published, what, what, what have you been working on? Where have you been taking those entrepreneurial skills? Yeah. I mean, so many great things have happened since this book came out. Um, and I, I'll go through a few, and I, you know, I think the first thing that was pretty cool um, is that the book, I grew up watching the NAACP Energy Awards. I love the NAACP Energy Awards. And I got a call that says, hey, you're nominated for a best memoir in 2020. And I was like, gosh, like, that's crazy. <laughs> so I remember calling my grandmother. And I said, Grandma, man, the book is nominated for the NAACP Energy Awards. And you know, she's a woman of faith. And she said, you know you're going to win, right? Like, you just got to have faith. Like, of course you're going to win. And I was like, and I really thought, I was like, yes, of course, I'm going to win. And she said, so, so who are you nominated against? She switched to her, I was like, uh, it's Obama's book. Malcolm <laughs> Gladwell. And she said, boy, you better just be grateful that you're not. <laughs> Around the country, 
and we gave them all the tools they need to become a thriving program. So that is kind of what our foundation does, and our mission is to make sure that every 